Greetings, mighty companions. Anna Kajawa here, and we are doing A Course in Miracles, the complete and annotated edition. So this is the latest and most original edition of A Course in Miracles that I do every Wednesday. I started at uh, chapter one, section one, and I'm just making my way through the text. So we are just going to pick up this session where we left off from when we left off last session. And so where we're at is chapter four, section 10. It is titled uh, uh, Perfect and Direct Communication, chapter four, section 10. And we are gonna start on paragraph eight. So lovely to see you guys here. Hi, Les, hi, Carrie. Um, we are just going to see what A Course in Miracles has to say. We're going to listen together. We're going to listen for the healing answers that we are entitled to, that we have been asking for, that A Course in Miracles is chock full of. A Course in Miracles is a healing curriculum. Just by hearing the ideas and just by joining with other people who are also listening to these ideas is very healing. Even if you don't understand it, even if it's startling, even if you have resistance, just listening to it with others is healing in itself. So let's just do that. Let's just hear what The Course in Miracles has to say and allow its loving ideas, its powerful loving ideas to replace our old fearful limited ideas that we have been hurting ourselves with. So just listening to the ideas replaces the old beliefs that we are guilty and limited and that we should be afraid of everyone and everything. These ideas just naturally replace those as we listen to them together. So where we're at, so again, we are chapter 10, I'm sorry, chapter four, section 10, paragraph eight. So it says, the Bible repeatedly states that you should praise God, but that hardly means that you should tell God how wonderful God is. So it says, God has no ego with which to accept such thanks, and God has no perceptions with which to judge your offerings. <clears throat> Excuse me. So of course, the so whereas the Bible says you should praise God, the Course of Miracles says that, that God has no ego with which to receive your praise and no perceptions by which to judge your praise. But unless you take your part in the creation, then God's joy is not complete because your joy is incomplete. And that your joy is incomplete because you're not taking your part in creation, the creation, it says, God no, does know that. So when your joy is incomplete because you're not taking your part in the creation, you're not extending creation like you were created to do, you, your joy is not complete and God knows that. When your joy isn't complete, God knows it. It says, and God knows this in God's own being and in God's own experience of your experience. Wow. So in other words, when you're not taking your part in the creation, when you're not creating as you were created to do, when you're not communicating with every aspect of creation, when you're not cre communicating with your source, you're not taking your part in the creation, you're not being the communicating creator that you were created to be, and your joy is incomplete, and your creator knows it. Your creator knows it in his own being and in your experience as well. In other words, when you're not taking your part in creating through communication with creation, then the constant going out of God's love is blocked when God channels you are closed. So when you are closed, when you're not allowing communication to move through you to every aspect of creation and the source of creation, when you're not in communication with your creator, 
then the constant going out of God's love is blocked. And believe it or not, God is lonely when the minds that God created do not communicate with God. When we do not communicate fully with our Creator, with our Source, our Creator is lonely. When we, God's children, don't communicate fully with our Source. So God is a very loving, loving parent who wants to communicate with us who wants to communicate through us just like we want to communicate with our children and if we weren't communicating with our children we would be lonely as well our creator is a loving parent just like us and our loving parent god creator source wants to communicate with us wants to communicate with us or wants to communicate through us and feels lonely when we don't communicate with God, our Creator, our Spirit Parent. So, um, good reminder about our relationship with our Creator, with our Source. Our Source, our Creator, is not some kind of distant, judgmental parent. Our Creator is a loving, loving, parent who wants to communicate fully with us and is lonely when we don't communicate with God, our spirit parent. Good to remember that. So let's, uh, let's start communicating again with our Creator. As a matter of fact, it says in the earlier paragraphs, that's what we were created for and by. We were created by our Creator communicating His mind to our mind, and we were created for communication. Communication is life. Communication is creation. That's how we came into being. That's what we were created to do. And as we communicate, joining minds, joining minds with Source and also with all the other creations of God, as we communicate and join, we are creating. We are creating. So we were saying in the last few paragraphs in last session that the way to create what you want, the world you want, the experience you want, is to communicate it, to join minds upon it, to join minds, to join in ideas with other minds. That is how we communicate. And so if there's something that you would really like to create in your world or in your life, the way to do that is to communicate it. Join with other minds in the idea of it. And that is how creation occurs. Beautiful. Uh, hello, Jane. Hi, Kenneth. Hi, Demi. Hi, Carly. And hi, Rich. Lovely to see you all. Thanks for joining your beautiful energy to this healing circle. We were just listening to the ideas of A Course in Miracles, allowing them to replace our old beliefs of separation, lack, fear, guilt, pain, suffering, and we are allowing ourselves to be healed together by truth. So that's what we heard on Monday, that that's our job, that's our function as healers of the world, is to join with each other in this healing purpose healing our own minds and um, healing, holding the purpose of a healed world. So here we go. So that it says in paragraph, in paragraph nine, God has kept your kingdom for you. So God has kept your heaven for you, but God cannot share God's joy with you until you know God's joy with your whole mind. So God has kept your joy that God gave you for you, but you can't know this joy, this ecstasy, this heaven that your creator is holding for you until you know it with your whole mind. Wow, knowing God's joy with your whole mind, what an interesting concept. Yes, knowing God's joy, God's love with your whole mind, that's called revelation. 
when you have a revelation, it's a, uh, it is an experience of unspeakable love, unspeakable joy. It is an experience of the love and the unspeakable love and joy that your Creator has for you. When you are in full communication with your Creator, of course, the Miracles calls that a revelation. Okay. And it says, it says, even revelation is not enough because revelation is communication from God, but it is not enough. Revelation is not enough unless revelation is shared. Okay, so revelation is when you're experiencing communication from God. So you're having an experience of communication from God. That's revelation. And then it says, uh, but God doesn't need that revelation returned to God, which would clearly be impossible. But what God does want is that revelation, that communication that you receive from God. It, God does want that revelation, that communication brought to others. Okay? So God is constantly communicating God's love and joy to us. That is ecstasy. That's our heaven. God is holding this communication with God for us. So he's holding it for us. And saying though, that unless we are extending that communication that we've received from our Creator, unless we are saying, thank you, wow, that is heavenly ecstatic, and then extending that communication to others, then it says, then our joy is complete. So our joy is not complete just receiving that communication from our Creator. Our joy is complete when that communication goes from God through us to others. So it goes, we receive the revelation, which means communication with God, and then extends out to others. Now, it's saying that this um, bringing of that revelation to others the extending of it to others. That is not, it cannot be done with the actual revelation because the actual revelation, that communication from God, it says it cannot be expressed and is intensely personal to the mind which receives it. Okay? So in other words, as we are going to be extending that communication that we received from our source, we can't we can't bring the revelation directly from them, from God to them, because that communication with your source is extremely personal. It's intensely personal to you who receive that. And so you can't just, you can't go say, oh my God, you got to hear what I heard from God and what that was like for me. He says that it's not you can't share that, the revelation itself, the communication perfect and direct with others. But what you can do is, is, it says, but the revelation can be returned by that mind to other minds through the attitudes which the knowledge from the revelation brings. So I can't, I can't transmit directly to other people what I experienced in that intensely personal state of revelation where I was experiencing communication direct and perfect with God, my source. I was receiving communication from source. Okay? It's too personal to share with others and then get it. Mostly they'll be like, what? What is? No, they won't get it because of its intensely personal nature. What it's saying though, is that that communication from source can be brought to others through the attitudes, through the attitudes which that revel revelatory experience produced in you. And that's the way that we bring to others. Because remember, it's all about communication. Our joy, our ecstasy, our heaven becomes complete when the channel of communication is not broken. So here we are receiving the communication of love and joy and peace and support that's always coming from our source, our creator. But it's got to come through us and go to others 
or else it's blocked. And until we are allowing that communication from source and then channeling it on to others through the attitudes, the loving attitudes, it says then our joy will not be complete. If we are receiving that communication from our source, but we're not then extending it uh, to others, then there's a block. The communication is coming in, the love and peace and joy is coming in, but it's not going out. It's not going out. And so your joy will not be complete. Your heaven, your ecstasy will not be complete until the communication is comes comes in and goes through. All right. So, but it's see, it's all about communication. Our heaven, our kingdom, our ecstasy. It all comes down to communication, being in communication with source, and then being a channel for communication to others. That's what it means to be a creator and to create like you were created. So it all comes down to communication, all right? Boy, have we forgotten what we are about, what we are created for, by, what it's about. We, for, we have totally missed it. It's about learning how to communicate with Source and um, with others. That's our, where our joy and our ecstasy is made complete, and that is where we become what we are, creators. That's how we create the world that we want to live in. That's how we create the experience and the life that uh, we are entitled to. We communicate it, okay? We receive it in through communication and then we extend it on through communication. So, lovely to see you guys, Patricia and Tammy and Steve, lovely to have you in this healing circle today. Thank you. All right, so, um, so, so that's uh, communication from source and then through us to others. All right. Then it says, now we're in paragraph 10. It says, God is praised really whenever any mind learns to be wholly helpful. Okay? So instead of telling God how awesome God is, really the best way to praise God is by learning how to be be what? Holy, helpful. Okay? That's how you praise God. How do you praise God? You learn how to be helpful to others. That's how you praise God. Learning how to be holy, helpful. How do you be holy, helpful to others, by the way? What does that mean to be completely helpful, wholly helpful to others? So, so what does our creator source want from us? Not that we tell him how awesome and wonderful he is, but that we be helpful to God's children, to God's creations. That's what our creator really wants from us. It's like, take the love I'm giving you, says our source, and give it to my children. Receive the love that I am pouring upon you and communicating to you all of the time, and then take that and extend that on to my children, my creations. That's how we be wholly helpful to others, to God's creations, and that's how we praise God. It says, God is praised whenever any mind learns how to become wholly helpful. Now, what does it mean to be wholly helpful? I know we all want to learn how to be wholly helpful. It says, learning how to be completely helpful is impossible without being completely harmless. Because the two beliefs, helpful and harmless, must coexist. Interesting. So if you want to be helpful, it really means to be harmless. And when you are harmless, you are automatically being helpful. So, so good to know and to hear what it really means to be helpful, okay? 
And of course, Miracle says, don't try to help people in your way. You don't even know how to help yourself. You don't even know what help means. So don't try to help people in your own way. Be helpful in this way. Learn how to be harmless. Ah, okay. Uh, so I would like to learn how to be harmless. So if I can just learn how to be harmless, then I will automatically be being helpful. And this is so much easier and less complicated than anything you would come up with about how to be helpful to others in any given situation. So if you're in a situation where obviously there's a call for help, so there's a need for help going on, this is telling us the best way, the most effective, efficient way to be helpful in any situation calling for help. Just learn how to be harmless. Do no harm. Learn how to be harmless, okay? So, and then you will automatically be being helpful. Now, do you have any situations in your life right now where there's a big old fat call for help, where somebody in that situation obviously needs some help? Um, this is a, this is the idea that you want to apply in that situation so that you can extend real helpfulness real help in a situation calling for help so basically when there's a situation calling for help the first thing that of course of miracles is telling us to remember is i'm only here to be truly helpful i'm only here to be harmless same thing. To say I'm only here to be truly helpful is the same as saying uh, just let me be harmless in this situation. Let me do no harm. I just want to be helpful. That's all. And I'm not going to try to help them in my own way. I'm going to uh, learn how to be helpful through A Course in Miracles definition of helpful. Okay. So, so it says something very interesting about those who are truly helpful, okay? Which means those who are truly harmless. When you are being truly helpful and truly harmless, you are invulnerable, okay? Um, what did you say, of course? What, what produces an experience of being invulnerable? Perk my ears up. It says, those who are truly helpful and truly harmless, they are invulnerable, meaning can't be hurt. Now, how is that? The reason that when you're being truly helpful and truly harmless, you can't be hurt is because when you are being truly helpful and harmless, you are not protecting your egos. And when you're not protecting your ego, nothing can hurt you. Oh, good to know. Say what? How is it that I could be in a state of mind where, where I can't be hurt? Uh, you can't be hurt when you're not protecting your ego. So being truly helpful, being truly harmless is in a state of mind where you're not protecting your ego. You're not defending your ego. You're not feeling like, oh, I gotta protect myself and I gotta prove something and I got to defend myself. When you say I gotta defend myself and I gotta prove myself, um, what you're really saying is uh, I need to protect my ego. Okay? When you feel the need to be defensive, when you feel self-righteousness arise in you and you have got to correct people or defend yourself, um, you're saying, uh, I need to protect my ego. Okay. And the ego, your ego is the only thing that really is in need of protection. Okay. Why? Because the ego is an illusion. You know, the ego is not real. That's why the ego always feels vulnerable and in need of defense, in need of proving itself. The only thing that needs to prove itself all day long is something that isn't real. 
that is, is, that is an illusion. Okay. So whenever you feel the need to protect yourself, to defend yourself, to correct others, um, you, you, you know you're protecting your ego because only your ego needs you to prove yourself. Only the ego needs to prove anything. Okay. Now, but if you're not, if you're not trying to protect your ego, if you're not defending yourself, if you're not trying to prove yourself, then you can't be hurt. You can only be hurt when you're trying to prove something, when you're defending yourself. Well, that's what it means to be truly harmless. Can't hurt me. I, I, I can't hurt you because I can't be harmed. Okay? I know I can't be harmed. And when I know I can't be harmed, I have, uh, I'm gonna be nothing but harmless. So I really love hearing how to be helpful, how to be harmless, which is the same thing as how to be invulnerable, how to not set up a situation where I am gonna hurt myself, or I'm gonna feel hurt, okay? The only thing that can be hurt in you is your false self-concepts. That's the only thing that can be hurt, that which isn't real and true about you. So when you're defending yourself and you, you're really protecting something that's not true about you, okay? what's true in you really is invulnerable. It can't be hurt. The truth about you, your real self can't be hurt, especially by what people think about you, what people say, you know, uh, for sure. You know, that, um, that uh, you can't be hurt by that, okay? So, when you are not protecting your ego, when you're realizing, hey, who I really am doesn't need to be defended, uh, who I really am doesn't need to prove anything, then you are going to be only helpful to others. It's only when you're trying to prove something and defend something and try to protect your ego that you're gonna be doing harm or the illusion of harm, okay? Mm. So, I love hearing about that. So I'll say it again. The truly helpful and harmless are invulnerable. They can't be hurt. Why? Because they are not protecting their egos. And since they're not protecting their egos, nothing can hurt them. So I just want to stop on that for a moment, and I want you to think about this. If, is there an area of your life or a relationship right now in which you are feeling hurt? I can't believe they said that, I can't believe they did that, I feel really hurt by their action, by their thoughts, by their whatever. I want you to think about this that your feeling hurt, your hurt feelings are coming because you've been trying to protect your ego, which is your self-concepts that you learned about yourself. Um, you're trying to prove something. You're trying to protect your self-concept, your pride. Um, and so I want you to think, uh-huh, okay. So I'm feeling hurt in this relationship right here. What's really going on is not that they hurt me. They haven't done any damage to the real me at all. What's really going on is, um, is I, am, I am wanting to protect a self-concept like my pride or my specialness. I am wanting to protect an illusion, a, a false self-concept of myself that can be hurt. And that is why I'm feeling hurt. Not because of what they said or did, but because I am trying to protect my ego as if that's who I am, right? So only when I'm thinking I am my body and I am my personality and I am my actions and my behavior, only then am I going to be feeling like I've got to protect myself. 
and only when I'm God. I gotta protect my pride. I gotta protect my reputation. I gotta protect my specialness. Um, then you're gonna feel hurt. Okay. So new. De it's a it's a different way of interpreting your sense of being hurt. Now, when you correctly interpret that feeling of being hurt, ah, oh, that insult. Uh, when you correctly interpret the hurt that you feel, the harm you feel like was done to you, when you correctly interpret the hurt, the hurt is gone, okay? The hurt is not what you think it is. The hurt is not they insulted me, they hurt my pride, they did damage to me, to my self-concept, that is not what happened. What happened is you were defending an illusion about yourself. And when you're defending an illusion about yourself, that makes you vulnerable to the illusion of harm. All right, so I'm feeling hurt because I was protecting my egos. I was associating myself with my ego, associating myself with my personality, my behavior, my body, and that's, why I felt hurt by what they said or by what they did. All right. So lovely to see you guys, Michelle and and Leah. Hi, Leah and Daniel, Yeshua and Trisha. Lovely to have you joining this circle, this healing circle. All right. Anybody got any feelings of hurt going on in their relationships that they would like to be gone? Hurt, be gone. That's what I'm gonna name this. Hurt be gone, okay? Hurt comes. Hurt is, I feel vulnerable. I feel like uh, somebody has done damage to me and it hurts. And what's really going on is not, you haven't been hurt, you've just been defending, you've been protecting your ego. When you're protecting your pride, your specialness, um, your body, your personality, your self-concepts, what you're saying is, is I'm weak and vulnerable. And then, ta -da, you experience it. Now, so I love what it's saying. It's saying um, the truly helpful are invulnerable because the truly helpful are not protecting their egos. And since they're not protecting their egos, nothing can hurt them. So if you want to be truly helpful, and invulnerable in any situation or relationship calling for help, the first thing to do is stop defending yourself. Stop protecting your personality, your pride, your ego. Stop defending yourself. So like the Course in Miracles says that in my defenselessness, my safety lies. In my defenselessness, my safety, my invulnerability, my freedom from harm or hurt comes, okay? What's frightening is that you're associating yourself with a vulnerable body and a vulnerable <clears throat> pride and ego. That's what's hurting, <clears throat> not what anybody is saying or doing. So when in a situation that's calling for help, first thing to do is stop protecting your ego. Stop defending yourself. That's the first thing to do. As soon as you stop defending yourself and protecting your ego, AKA pride or specialness, then you will begin to experience your true invulnerability. And when you're in a situation that's calling for help and you're remembering that, hey, I don't need to defend myself. I'm created by God. I'm not my body anyway. I don't need to protect myself. I don't need to defend myself. My identity is established by God. Um, immediately, you are going to be offering real help into that situation, even if you don't open your mouth or seem to take any actions. Okay? So this is we're learning how to be helpful, truly be helpful. To be helpful is to be harmless, and to be harmless is to be helpful. And how do you be harmless? Don't defend your ego. Don't protect your ego. Okay? All right. And that's usually what we're doing in fights anyway. We're just protecting our ego. You know, we're defending our ego. You know, 
All right. Now, which is really just hurting ourselves and each other. All right. Then it says, their helpfulness is their praise of God. So when you're being truly helpful and harmless to others, you are praising God. You are praising God. That's how you do it. You want to praise God? Be helpful and harmless to God's children. That's what God really wants from you. God doesn't want you telling God how awesome God is. God's like, I don't have an ego to receive that. Please just give that now to my children who really need it. Now, it says, and when you are helpful and harmless to God's children, then God will return your praise of God because you are like God and you can rejoice together. It says, when you are being helpful and harmless to God's children, God's creations, by not protecting your own ego, identity, pride, it says, God goes out to you and through you, and there is great joy throughout reality. Wow, that's how it goes, okay? How does great joy go throughout the land? I mean, uh, I, I think we could use some of that right about now. Some great joy going out, going to us and through us out into the land, out into the kingdom. And the way that's done is exactly what we just heard. The way you bring peace on earth and goodwill to all people is you allow the communication from God to you, because that's what your creator wants to do. Your creator wants to communicate with you, just like you want to communicate with your children. And then you allow that love and that joy to go out to God's children by being helpful and being harmless to God's children. So you receive the love and the peace and the joy through revelation, which means communication with your creator. But since you can't communicate that revelation from God directly to others, then you give the attitudes that you receive from that communication with God to others. And that attitude is being helpful and harmless uh, in situations calling for help. That is God going out to you and through you, and then there's great joy in the land. All right, that's how it happens. Because every mind that is changed adds to this joy in the kingdom with its own individual willingness to share in it. Okay, beautiful. So Les says, enjoy being helpful with your creator. That's what we were created for. Exactly. So our creator wants us to be in communication with our Creator because only by being in communication with your Source can you experience like intensely personally the joy, the ecstasy, the heaven that you can't even describe with words. It's a, a revelation. The experience of receiving and experiencing the love and the joy your Creator has for you it is something that you cannot speak in words. You can't, it's, it's unspeakable love. Revelation is an experience of unspeakable love. The love that your source, your parent has for you is an unspeakable love. There are no words that can truly describe that love. And that is what our source, our spirit parent, is always communicating to us. Our spirit parent is saying, well, here's the laws and here's the commandments. Here's the way I want you to obey me. Are you taking notes? <clears throat> this might take a while. Our spirit parent, our source creator, God, father, mother, whatever you want to call <clears throat> that infinitely loving mind from which we came, it's not telling you what you need to do or how you need to obey it. It's not giving you a bunch of laws and rules. All it's saying to us is, I love you, I love you, I love you. 
unconditional love. There is no limit to my love. I give you everything I have. You are my you are my own beloved creation in whom I am well pleased. I love you. I'll never leave you. I've given you everything. All I have is yours. I love you. I yearn to communicate with you. My love for you is without limit. That's all that our communer, our creator is is saying to us. It's not just a bunch of rules and laws. It's no, it's no rules and laws at all. You know, uh, we we got it wrong. <laughs> we heard it wrong relative to uh, the the lesson of God being some kind of judge <clears throat> who's handing down a lot of laws and commandments that need to be obeyed to receive His love. Okay, that's what we learned about God. And according to A Course in Miracles, that is not the truth about God. That God is not the judge giving out a bunch of rules and commandments for us to obey to receive his love or be punished into the, the fires of hell, okay? So, but because we learned that about God, now we're afraid to communicate with God. Now we're afraid to hear the voice for God in our heart because we learn that God demands sacrifice, and we learn that God is judgmental, and we learn that God is angry, and we learn that God's love is very, very conditional and temperamental. Um, and so we actually, so we've learned that to be one with God really it means to be punished <laughs> forever. So of course we stopped communicating with our source, with God. Of course we did. If you believe that communicating with your source is gonna end up in hearing a bunch of judgment and sacrifice and that you gotta do in order to receive his love, well, who would wanna communicate with them? Well, The Course in Miracles says, if that's the way you believe, if that's what you believe about God, then you're either gonna be one of two things. An atheist, who needs a God? There is no God, please, well. Uh, or a martyr. So that would be someone who but who wanted to sacrifice for God. Oh, look how I'm sacrificing for God. I'm so holy. I'm so holy. Look how look how I'm look how I'm beating myself. Self-flagellation. Look how I'm sacrificing for God. I'm so holy. A martyr or an atheist. If you believe that God is anything besides the author of love, if you think God is the author of death, if you think God is the author of fear, if you think God is the author of the world, if you think God is the author of the body, if you think God is the author of death, then you, that's it. You're either going to be an atheist or a martyr relative to God. And of course, a miracles is giving us a completely, a completely different understanding about what God is really is and the nature of God Um, and God is a love a loving parent with a love that we literally literally cannot conceive of we could have a revelation of it but there's no way that we could ever speak of it or express it with words at all okay Um, and we're also learning from A Course in Miracles that not only is God an unconditionally loving spirit parent, but that God yearns to be in communication with God's children, God's creations, and that when God's creations don't communicate with God, that God is lonely without them. Wow. Now, is that different or what? Truly, (laughs) Trisha says, O Divine Mother, allow me to work for you, to hear you, to act on your love. Amen. Uh, Yes, they want to be seen indeed. So, um, and you know, and then what it was saying in the earlier paragraphs of this section is that that is our heaven. That is our ecstasy. That is what we were created to do and to be. We were created by communication with our loving creator and we were created to love and to communicate without limit, without judgment, uh, 
just like our creator and that this is how we create and this is our heaven and this is our ecstasy is that we be just like our creator we don't create our creator but we are just like our creator you know that we um that we yearn to lovingly communicate with our source and others and that as we are in that helpful and harmless loving extension communication with others that is what um, enables us to experience being invulnerable wow now i would love to experience being invulnerable especially right about now how about you guys this time period seems to be full of a lot of feelings of vulnerability of feelings of being vulnerable to lack of money an economic collapse vulnerable to a, a pandemic a sickness that a, a disease that who knows what it could do to you this is a time of profound perception of vulnerability so hearing hearing this section talk about um, what it takes to experience your true and vulnerability is a wonderful timing really wonderful timing so instead of being so protective of my body and so defensive for my for my personal safety what I would like to do after hearing this is I would like to instead of like okay what do I need to do to protect myself what do I need to protect my ego and my body uh, I want to be instead asking um, I, my, my only purpose here is to be truly helpful. My only purpose here is to be truly helpful um, and to, which is to be harmless. I'm only here to be truly helpful. I'm only here uh, on earth in a body during the global pandemic and economic collapse to be truly helpful. I'm only here in this relationship right here to be truly helpful. I'm only in this job if I still have my job to be truly helpful. I'm only here on the planet at this time to be truly helpful. I'm not here to protect my ego, my pride, my specialness, my belief system that I learned from my past. I'm just here to be truly helpful. And so, and then asking higher self, higher self, show me how to be helpful and harmless here. Show me what that means because those whose purpose only is to be truly helpful and harmless those folks are invulnerable because they're not protecting their ego they're not like how do i get something from me how do i get safety from me how do i get health for me i'm saying how can i be helpful i'm allowing that loving energy uh, to come through me it was coming from that's what my creator is offering me I'm just allowing it to come through me I'm not in the situation like what can I get well what can I get for me what can I get for my pride what can I get for my me me my 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 okay that's why when you're in a situation and all you're saying is I'm only here to be truly helpful you are literally allowing the loving energy from source to come into you and through you anything else is you for you service to self okay? um, there's two there's two reasons to live there's two purposes for being there's two purposes in every situation there's two purposes in every relationship and one of those purposes uh, makes you vulnerable and it leads to you not feeling safe and another the other purpose leads you to fe be feeling invulnerable and feeling safe those two purposes are this service to self meaning to ego and service to others how can I get something for just me like protect my pride my ego or how can I be truly helpful to this situation and the souls that are in this situation so if you want to be safe, if you want to feel safe, if you want to feel abundant 
If you want to feel provided for, if you want to feel protected like you really are in truth, then it comes from how can I be helpful? I'm only here to be truly helpful. I'm only here to be truly harmless. That's my only purpose here. Now, you don't have to know anything besides that. You don't have to know how to be helpful. You don't have to, you don't have to know like, oh, well, this will be helpful. All you have to do is, I am only here to be truly helpful, is to have that as a purpose. And then the best way to be helpful will come to you and come through you. So, wonderful. So let's say, um, Les says, when was the last time you felt, 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 felt this kind of communication, love? We are entitled to daily experiences of this. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Great question. Um, and then Les says, when is the last time you, you loved, really loved, really loved without conditions? Great questions, Les. Beautiful. All right. Now, that was the end of section number 10 in chapter 4. Yay, Yay we, we finished a section. All right. It's a miracle. Now we're in section 11 in chapter 4, and this section is titled, Being Truly Helpful. Okay. So we've been talking about what it means to be truly helpful which we learned is also being truly harmless. We're going to hear some more about that. Beautiful. I, I bring it on because he, I just heard that being truly helpful uh, gives me an experience of being invulnerable. So I'm down for that. Tell me more. I want to experience my invulnerability during these times of a global pandemic and an economic collapse. I want to experience my true and vulnerability at this time on earth right now. So I'm all ears, Course of Miracles, for this section. Perfect timing. All right, Irene says, end of section 10. Thank you for writing that down. That's right. So, and then Irene, will you write down, now we're doing chapter four, section 11. Being truly helpful. Right. It says the truly helpful, those who are not protecting their egos, they are God's miracle workers. Aha. And God's miracle workers are teacher directs, spirit directs God's miracle workers until we are all united in the joy of reality. Okay. So until everybody is awake, our teacher is going to do what? Direct all the miracle workers, okay? And who are the miracle workers? Those who just want to be truly helpful. Service to others instead of service to ego. Service to others instead of protecting their egos. So if you have said, I just want to be helpful, I'm here for service to others instead of service to self, um, then guess what? Now you are one of God's miracle workers. So congratulations. You are officially one of God's miracle workers because you said, I'm only here to be truly helpful. I'm here to be about service to others instead of service to self. Now, once you become a miracle worker, you will be directed, period. You will be directed, okay? It's not like, Oh, I'm only here to be helpful. I'm only here to serve others instead of service to self. And then, and then you're on your own. It's not like that. When you extend, when you, when you become the truly helpful, when you decide that your joy is in being truly helpful, service to others instead of service to self, you will be directed. It's basically like you now are going on cosmic scholarship. You just, now you're gonna be directed, not maybe, not sometimes, not if you're good enough miracle workers, you will be directed. You come under the direction of a higher power, a higher love, 
who does know you and knows what you need. So good to know. If you want to literally put yourself under the highest, most brilliant, genius, powerful direction, this is how you do it. You say, I'm only here to be truly helpful. I'm here for service to others instead of service to self. Boom. Now you're one of God's miracle workers and you are going to be directed. And wherever higher mind, spirit directs you, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. You're going to be full of miracles, full of abundance, full of grace, full of whatever you need. So, then it says, and so then our teacher, the voice of the chorus, is saying to us, I will direct you. They said, I'm going to direct you. Here's how I'm going to direct you. I'm going to direct you to wherever you can be truly helpful. Okay? So as soon as you become helpful, truly, you come under the direction of your teacher, and your teacher will then be directing you to wherever you can be most helpful. And also, your teacher is going to direct you to whomever can follow your teacher's guidance through you, okay? So, two things. You come under your teacher's guidance when you make that decision, that statement of purpose. I'm only here to be truly helpful. I'm here to be in service to others instead of service to self. Great, then your teacher goes, great, now I'm going to be directing you to wherever you can be truly helpful. I'm gonna be directing you to whomever can follow love's guidance through you, okay? So there are going to be people that can follow love's guidance through you. For whatever reason, the way it comes through you makes sense to them. They can understand it through you for some reason. For some reason, they can't understand love's guidance through others, but for some reason through you, it totally makes sense. And it's easy to hear love's guidance through you. Your teacher is going to direct you to them, okay? Those are going to be your students. Those are going to be your pupils. The ones that you can be truly helpful to. The ones you can be most truly helpful to are the ones who can hear love's voice best through you for whatever reason because the way you share it, they can easily get it. Okay? That, those are the people that you're going to be directed to. Not maybe, not sometimes, not if you're in a good mood that day, but you will be directed to them. So if you've been directed to somebody, there's a good chance that you've been directed to them. Okay, good to know. All right. So thank you, Irene, for that. And, um, and then Les says, God gives scholarships and individual tutorship to those who accept the challenge of being truly helpful. Exactly. It's like going to helpfulness college. You know, it's like, I'm willing to be truly helpful to the planet. I'm willing to be harmful to the planet, uh, harmless to the planet. And so then, you know, Cosmic University goes, great, here's a scholarship. Here's a full ride for you. Come on board and learn what it means to be truly helpful, okay? The Course in Miracles says, first you become a teacher of God. First you become helpful. Then you learn about your profession as you do it. So first you become your profession. You, you become a miracle worker. Then you learn what it means to be a miracle worker. You know, just like you go to college to learn how to be um, whatever profession you went to college for. So, um, same thing. So, uh, you know, I went to college to learn how to be a, a, a therapist. Well, the truth is, is that I didn't really start learning how to be a therapist till after I became a therapist. Here's my piece of paper, blah, 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 I'm a therapist. Then I started to learn about what true healing and true, what does it mean to really mean to be a therapist? Same thing with miracle workers. First, you become a miracle worker because you have a purpose. 
your purpose. You gave up, you have a helpful purpose. Boom, you became a miracle worker. Then you learn about your profession as you extend and work miracles. So don't think that just because you're a miracle worker and you've become one means that you should somehow be a perfected uh, or a, a, a wholly accomplished miracle worker. It's not like that, according to A Course of Miracles. So, um, and Demi says, uh, to be truly helpful is wonderful, but how might one deal with human behaviors that interfere? After all, we are human. Good question, Demi. So the Course is reminding us that in our essence, yes, ah, purpose, that's right. That's very good, you're fast, you're a fast student. That's right. Um, how do you deal with it? Whatever comes up, whatever situation or relationship you're in where there's obviously a call for help going on, um, it's you, you develop your skills, your miracle working abilities not by uh, going, not by going uh, a, a manual or going to your past. The way you develop your miracle working abilities is you use them. You go, uh huh. I'm only here to be truly helpful. Um, I'm only here to learn how to be helpful, um, and I'm only here to be harmless. I'm only here for service to others instead of protecting my ego, my pride, my specialness. Uh, as you, it's, it's your purpose that just stating that purpose that is the thing that comes in and shows you who to go to what to say and what to do that is helpful the what's really most helpful is just the purpose of being helpful I'm only here to be helpful I'm not here to protect my my ego my specialness my pride my plans, my scripts, my beliefs, okay? So just having that purpose um, is what enables your teacher to direct you. Do this, say this, go there. Don't say this, don't do that. You will be directed very specifically what to do, what to say, and to whom. Isn't that lovely? So you don't have to figure it out. It just takes all the pressure off of you. So to be a true miracle worker is really to take all pressure off of yourself. You don't have to figure out what to do to be helpful. You don't have to figure out who to be helpful to. Your purpose is what enables your teacher to direct you very specifically, where you don't have to figure it out. Your teacher will go, go here, do this, say that, da da or your teacher will say, don't do this and don't say that and don't go over there, okay? So just like our teacher tells us what to do, our teacher also says what not to do, also very important. Okay, I love it. And remember, and don't forget, as you, as you uh, learn how to be truly helpful and harmless, you get to experience your own true and vulnerability where now you don't feel the need or the pressure to defend yourself or protect your ego, which is the same thing. Okay, and keep coming back to that because that's so very important at this time where, where there seems to be so much scary vulnerability going on around here <clears throat> relative to physical health, life and death, uh, job, career, oh my God, everything. So we really want to hear what the Course of Miracles is saying about how to experience our true invulnerability at this time. All right. Now, okay, doing great. Okay, so now it's going to talk about some, some uh, forms of helpfulness that the world um, has uh, been extending. Okay. And now it's going to start talking about helpfulness uh, as healing and as rehabilitation. So helpfulness in the form of healing, in the form of rehabilitation. So it's saying some interesting things about rehabilitation. And it's basically like, 
Yeah, we all are in need of rehabilitation. In other words, we're all in need of healing and we're all in need of help. So first, it's talking about how to be helpful, how to be healing, how to be harmless, and then it's gonna talk about um, some forms of that. Now, so paragraph two, it says, okay, so, uh, one way that it, helpfulness has been extended in our world is through rehabilitation, whether it was physical rehabilitation or spiritual rehabilitation or, uh, or vocational rehabilitation, where we are allowing helpfulness um, in our uh, states of sickness or uh, chaos or whatever. Now, paragraph two. Regarding the field of rehabilitation, properly speaking, every mind which is split needs rehabilitation. <laughs> okay, so you've heard of people going into drug rehabilitation or vocational rehabilitation or uh, physical rehabil rehabilitation. How do you say that word? Rehabilitation. Um, uh, but this is saying that anyone who has a split mind is in need of rehabilitation. Okay, so I'm gonna go into a re rehab, okay? So if you got a split mind, you need rehab. Okay, that just kind of uh, levels out the playing field right there, okay? Uh, so now we're gonna talk about uh, the kind of rehab that we all need to go into, okay? Did you know that you needed to go into rehab? Okay, so it's not just for people who ha have physical damage or have a drug addiction or have a mental illness is not just for those folks. It's for anyone who has a split mind. So um, anybody out there who doesn't have a split mind, just, just checking, okay. Uh, and how do you know if you have a split mind? Well, do you have fear and guilt in your mind? Do you think you are a body? Do you act like you're a body? Do you defend your ego, okay? Um, just a quick check to see if you have a split mind. Okay. Do you experience love and fear in your own mind? All right, so we're gonna hear about, we're gonna hear about rehab Course in Miracles style, okay? Then it says, uh, the medical orientation of rehab emphasizes the body, like physical rehabilitation. And the vocational orientation of rehab stresses the ego. And says the team approach to rehab generally leads to, a, to more confusion than anything else because the uh, rehabilit the the team approach to rehabilitation too often is misused as an expedient for sharing the ego's dominion with other egos rather than as a real experiment in cooperation of minds. So basically what it's saying is the way the world and the ego does rehabilitation, whether it's physical, emotional, spiritual, um, vocational, the way the world does rehab just makes more confusion and emphasizes the split. It emphasizes the body as the source of experience and it, and it emphasizes you as a body. So the way the world does helpfulness, the way the world does healing, is not helpful, okay? Whether it's vocational rehab, physical rehab, emotional rehab, psychological rehab, whatever. The world don't know how to be truly helpful and truly harmless when there is a, a need for rehabilitation, when there's a need for healing, okay? Yeah, gotcha. So, beautiful, okay? Um, bring it on, says Trisha. Let less a split mind believing equally in love and fear. Exactly. Okay. So we first we heard about being helpful and which is really being healing, which is being harmless. Then it talks about how the world really doesn't know how to do real healing, re, real rehab. But it did say that we all need rehab. We all need healing because we got a split mind. So that's the, our core problem that's our core illness 
is that we got a split mind, okay? I think I am mind and body. I think I am spirit and body. I think I am good and evil. And so I got a split mind, and so I need rehab, okay? I need some help. I need some healing. Now, how the world does it, not helpful, is what it's saying here. Now we're on paragraph three. Uh, the reason why you should learn to offer rehabilitation is because you need rehabilitation yourself, okay? So we have to learn how to offer healing. We need to learn how to offer rehab, rehabilitation, because we need it, okay? So uh, if you need some healing, if you need help, then Course in Miracles says you got, you're going to have to learn how to give help. Do you need some rehab? Uh, then you, the way you do that is you learn to give it. So that's what A Course in Miracles says, that those who want to be healed must dedicate themselves to healing. Okay? So I dedicate myself to healing, but not because I'm an expert healer, uh, but because I need healing. And I receive healing as I give healing. So I dedicated myself to healing because I want healing, because my mind is split which means my mind is sick. And guess what happens to my body and my life and my relationships when my mind is sick? Sure, you guessed it. Everything we mentioned is also sick. But the Course in Miracles says the only thing that can be sick is the mind. The mind that is split, okay? So, um, so do you need healing? Do you need help at this time? Uh, okay, then you know what to do. Dedicate yourself to helping and to healing others. Wonderful. And that does not that does not imply any kind of pressure or expectation there. Remember, just the purpose of being helpful, the purpose of being harmless um, to God's cre creations and creatures. That is what enables your teacher to direct you to whomever could be helped easily through you. So if you are trying to help somebody and they are resisting your help and they are resisting your help and resenting your help, uh, that is not somebody that your teacher has sent you to. Right? You will know the beings, the souls that your teacher has directed you to because the person who your teacher has directed you to is somebody who however the love comes through you, they get it. They want it, it's easy for them to hear it, to receive it through you. But it doesn't matter the reason. Um, that's the one your teacher has directed you to. So. Uh, stop trying to force your helpfulness on people who don't want it through you, who, who resist you, who fight you, okay? You ever tried to help somebody who was resisting your help? Anyone? Uh, we all have, where you're like, oh, I'm going to help you. I know how to help you. I'm going to help you in my own way. And then they're like, I don't want your help. And they resist you, resist, and you're like, why are you, why are you resisting my help? What is why are you, I'm just trying to help you. Why are you resisting my help? And then we judge them for resisting help through us. Okay, so you'll know the people that your teacher has directed you to because they can receive God's truth, God's healing love through you easily. However it comes through you, makes sense to them. No problem, no resistance. All right, and as a matter of fact, the Course in Miracles says, if you are offering help, your version of help, to somebody who's resisting it, and you keep offering help to them, you keep trying to help them, you're really attacking them. You're not helping them at all. You're really attacking them. So just go, oh, that's not my student. Oh, that's not the one. Uh, apparently they have a different teacher. So I'm gonna move out of the way so that their teacher can come to them, okay? I don't wanna be taking up space when their real teacher is, uh, is, you know, is on their way. All right, now, I am going to change this music, I think, or just turn it down. Okay, wonderful. That was just 
finish this paragraph then and then we'll finish this section. So it says, uh, the reason why you should learn to offer rehab or helpfulness is because you need rehab yourself. So often have I answered, help your brother when you have asked me to help you. So it's exactly what we were just saying. So, so often says our teacher to us, our teacher is saying this, so often when you were like, help me teacher, help me. What did I say to you? Help others, help, help your brothers and sisters. That is what our teacher has been saying to us when we asked for help. Um, when we asked for help from our teacher, our teacher said, help others. And we're like, but that doesn't answer my question. How, how is that helpful to me, teacher? Well, now we say, now we understand how and why our teacher would say that to us and why that'd be helpful. Okay? Um, obviously, when you need help and you offer help, helpfulness, harmlessness to others, then you are now able to receive the help for yourself. Okay? That's why so often when we said to teacher, help, and then our teacher said in response, help others. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> beautiful. So it's like this, until I'm offering help to others, I don't believe I deserve help. So until I give it, I'm not gonna believe I deserve it. So that's why when we're asking our teacher for help, our teacher says, help others, because then you'll believe that you deserve my help. So, then it says, um, your brother too, your brother and sister also have asked for help, and they have been helped whenever they were truly helpful to you. They got the help they needed when they were helpful to you. So, if you want help, then you need to be helpful to them, just like they received help when they were helpful to you. So let other people be helpful to you, okay? Don't, don't, be, don't be resistant to receiving other people's help, you know? Because the only way they can receive help is if they're helpful to you. So they need somebody to be helpful to. And if you don't let them be helpful to you, then you are keeping them for, from receiving the help that they really need, okay? So don't, don't be falsely humble like that and resist people helping you. Um, when you need help. You know how we are. We're all so like defensive against being helped. We all have such resistance to being helped. Somebody tries to help us and we're like, no, 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 I no, 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 no. Thank you anyway, but no, 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 no. Now, so that's, that's you keeping them from receiving help for themselves. So when someone is offering you help, accept it for them and you, okay? Because they need, they, they need the gifts of being helpful to you as much as you need the help that they are offering. So don't forget that, that you're not helping them at all. You're doing them a big disservice if you don't allow them to help you when they're offering help to you, okay? So let them help you because this is what allows them to receive help from themselves because now they believe they deserve help because they helped you. Okay, so you're doing them a favor by allowing, by receiving their help. Very important for us codependent, very independent people who are like, no, 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 I don't need any help, you know, thinking that you're doing them a favor by not letting you, not letting them help you. You're not. Now, it says they have also gained to whatever extent they could give. Right, so, um, so it says, let them help you because they are gaining by helping you, just like you gain by helping them, okay? So, very interesting. So when we ask our teacher for help, notice that the t our teacher often says, well, the help you're asking of me, give it to them, and then you will believe you deserve it, and you will receive the help I'm already offering you, says our teacher. All right, beautiful. So we're learning what it means to be helpful. In recap, we're learning what it means to be helpful. 
It means to be truly harmless. It means to not be protecting your ego. Um, and we also learned that with this purpose of being truly helpful, not protecting our egos, we will experience our true invulnerability, which is what we want to experience in this time. And then we also learned about um, also what it means to be helpful to others. An another way to be helpful to others is to let them help you. So we're learning about what it me really means to be helpful and also what it really means to be to receive help as well. So that's what we're learning about right here. Okay, any other questions before I do the announcements and the integration meditation? Mm. Demi says, framing out help, like, hey, could I give you my opinion, etc.? If they say no, walk away and don't take it personal. Thank you for saying that, Demi. Right, we also learned that if somebody is resistant to your help, it doesn't mean that they're an idiot and you should try harder and force it on them and give them guilt um, into receiving help, you know, your help. If they are resistant to your help, that means simply that they are not the one that your teacher is directing you to. That's the one your ego directed you to, okay? And um, so when they, uh, when they resist your help, like Demi says, you, you walk away with a smile on your face and you don't take it personal. And you remember, oh, that wasn't my student. Oh, beautiful, I'm so glad I know how to tell the difference these days. So happy I know how to tell the difference between someone who's not, who I, I wasn't directed to and someone who I was directed to. The one that you were directed to by your, your teacher is someone who, when, when, when the ideas come through you, that uh, the help comes through you, they're like, oh, yes, that makes sense. Thank you so much, right on, that's so helpful. Oh, I totally get it. I don't know why, when you say it or when you offer it, I, it just makes sense, it's great. That's the one to, that you have been directed to. And as soon as you become one of God's miracle workers, which means as soon as you decide that you're only here to be truly helpful and that and harmless as soon as you have that change of purpose for any situation or your life you immediately go into the service of your teacher and your teacher immediately starts employing you okay so if you're unemployed and you uh and you're or you're looking for a higher level of employment then put yourself in the service of your teacher, okay? Because it's impossible that you put yourself in the service of teacher, of spirit, which is being helpful, and teacher not employing you immediately, okay? It's impossible that you dedicate yourself to the purpose of being helpful and harmless and you not be employed by the universe. Impossible. So, it, so that's the first thing we want to do, especially if we either are unemployed and want to be employed or we're employed and we don't like the, our level of employment. What you need to do first and foremost is go to work for a higher mind, for spirit. Unite your purpose with the purpose of spirit. I'm only here to be truly helpful uh, to God's children. You will immediately be employed by spirit okay you will be immediately put to work and the benefits the fr the, the 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 benefits to uh serving and that spirit company uh below all benefits of any company you ever heard of um those that is employment with the ultimate benefits okay all right so, so happy to see your name and to feel your energy, all you. Marjorie, lovely to see you as well. Thank you for joining your beautiful light, your lovely energy uh, to this healing circle. I thank you for it. And the world that benefits from us joining like this also thanks you for it. 
great use of your time, way to save and heal the world as well as yourself. Way to be truly helpful. Good job. All right, I love it. Irene says, I go to work with the higher spirit. HS, use me. Exactly, beautiful. Hi, Margie. Okay, so now we're going to do announcements and then we are going to do um, the integration meditation where we're just going to take these ideas and use them like we always do at the end of the section. So, so announcements are this. I do two classes, two live streams each week. Um, I don't, uh, uh, my Monday class I do now from home since I'm not teaching at the Miracle Center. Hi, baby. And, um, and then, so two live streams a week. Baby, go do that off camera. Come on, go scratch off camera. Thank you. Um, so two live streams a week, Monday and Wednesday, 7 to 8.30 p.m. On Wednesdays, I do, like tonight, the annotated edition of A Course in Miracles. And on Mondays, we do Miracle Roulette where we allow spirit to decide for us what we need to hear from A Course in Miracles through the device called the random number generator. So, um, and you can find my classes in an easier way to see them on my YouTube channel. So if you would like to see more of my classes or get notification of my classes when I post them, then go to my YouTube channel and hit like and subscribe. And please do that. When you, when you hit like and subscribe, it lets uh, YouTube know that this content is valuable and, um, and then it boosts uh, viewership. And uh, if there's something that we want to be viewed more around the planet, it is ideas and classes like these. So help these ideas and these classes to extend out to more minds that need help um, and if you feel like you would like to extend this class, also post it on your Facebook feed as well. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for um, posting this class. Thanks for going over to my YouTube channel and hitting like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Um, and oh, beautiful. Marjorie says, oh, looks just like my golden retriever, Chelsea, from decades ago. Yes, no worries. No worries, Marjorie. Just, you can just go right back to the beginning. And Trisha says, you're feeling my tooth, LOL. <laughs> yes, beautiful. So, um, beautiful. Also, I'm a holistic psychotherapist and I facilitate one-on-one -on -one miracle psychotherapeutic sessions where we one-on-one -on -one, through Skype, phone, or in person, a little bit later, um, apply these ideas to whatever it is that you're going through in, in any area of life where you need some help, okay? So the best way to reach me for that is either, either private message me on Messenger or go to my website, anakujawa.com and uh, find my phone number on my website and then text, text me at my phone number. It's the best way to reach me. All right, so now we're going to do the integration meditation. So just for a couple of minutes, we're just gonna feel the ideas and we're going to apply them to our life and our relationships, okay? Because that's how we come to see the truth of these ideas and get the miracles that are in these ideas. We use them, we apply them. So what I want you to do is close your eyes if you're not driving. All right. And just breathe and feel Feel what these ideas feel like in your mind, your heart, your body, your life. Feel what, these, uh, what it feels like to listen to these ideas in a circle, a healing circle of beings like yourself who need help and who also want to learn how to be helpful. Beautiful. All right. Okay. 
So I want you to bring to your awareness a situation or a relationship right now that is calling for help. Either where you feel like you need some help or you're around people who really need some help. Um, we're all right now in a world um, uh, where there's a lot of people around us who, who need help, who perceive that they need help. Okay? We are in a time of a global pandemic and an economic collapse. And so um, let's bring to our awareness a situation or a relationship in which there is a call for help, whether that's in our own life or on our planet. Bring that to your awareness and breathe. Beautiful. And now I want you to um, say this prayer. I want you to imagine yourself in the midst of this situation or relationship, whether it's the global pandemic, economic collapse situation where people really are calling for help or a situation or relationship in your life. I want you to imagine yourself in the midst of this situation calling for help. And I want you to say this prayer within this situation. I am here only to be truly helpful. In the situation in which I see myself right now, in the situation, this global situation, in this relationship situation, whatever it is, I am here in this situation or relationship only to be truly helpful. And take a breath. I am here to be truly harmless. I am here only be, to be truly helpful and harmless. That's why I'm here in this situation. That's my only purpose now in this situation or relationship, global or personal. And now I want you to say to yourself, I don't have to worry about what to say or do to be helpful. I don't have to worry about what to say or do to be helpful or to harmless. I don't have to worry about what to say or do. I don't have to worry about what to say or do in this situation calling for help. I don't have to worry about what to say or do to be helpful here because the my teacher who sent me into this situation calling for help will direct me, will direct me as to what to say or do, how to be helpful. I don't have to worry about what to say or do to be helpful in this situation because the teacher who sent me here will direct me about what to say or do, how to be helpful, how to be harmless. And take a breath. And then say, I am content to be wherever my teacher wishes me to be, knowing that my teacher goes there with me. So I'm content to be in this situation calling for help because I know that my teacher, my guide, go, is here with me. So I'm, con I'm content to be wherever my teacher has brought me. I am content to be in this situation that my teacher has brought me to because I know that my teacher is here with me. And breathe. Let go of 
the resistance and the judgment for being in this situation that is calling for help. Let go of the resistance, let go of the judgment. You are content to be in this situation knowing that your teacher has entered it with you. And will direct you. And now we say, I will be healed. I will be helped as I let my teacher teach me how to be helpful, how to heal. I will be helped and healed as I allow my teacher to teach me how to be helpful, how to heal. And breathe. Saying again, I am here only be, to be. <clears throat> I am here only to be truly helpful. Teacher, show me how to be truly helpful. Show me how to be truly harmless. Show me how to not protect my ego right now. Show me how not to defend myself. Please help me to not defend myself. Please help me to not protect my ego. Show me what it means to be truly helpful and to be truly harmless. And then listen. workers you are now officially God's miracle workers and you officially are being employed which means directed to those who can experience love's helpfulness through you so good work enjoy the benefits I appreciate you guys so much and uh, don't forget to post this on your feed and go check out my classes on YouTube I appreciate you so much and thank you so much for your valuable precious time that you have invested in this healing circle today. I love you. Appreciate you. See you next time I see you.